Captain's Log, Sailing Vessel Equus, Day 10, Arrival to the Azores. Seas, a paltry one half to one meter. Currently nighttime, moon phase, waxing gibbous. Wind, 12 knots. Motor sailing at eight knots, bearing 118 degrees. Direct course for Horta. Total engine hours, 35. Nautical miles to destination, 130. Land ho! After 10 days at sea, we finally saw land this afternoon. We're passing very close to the outlaying island of Ila das Flores. My Portuguese isn't that great, but I'm fairly sure that means the island of flowers. I wish we could stop, but now we're on a schedule and we're a little bit behind. Note to self, go visit the island of flowers. We got close enough to the island to catch a bit of Wi-Fi today, so we spent a couple hours catching up on news and researching the island. Wow. Caves, waterfalls, little villages. It looks amazing. I bet the spearfishing is great too. Though I think this is a natural park, so it may be illegal. Regardless, I would really like to come back here before moving on. We'll see if that can happen. Tonight is our final night of freedom. I'm going to celebrate by reading and relaxing we're currently motor sailing rather quickly with the wind slowly increasing in strength. With any luck, we'll be sailing right for our destination by midnight. We are beating, that is heading face into the wind for the first time since the Chesapeake. And it's actually not bad. There's been a lull in the wind in this general area for the last uh, around 36 hours and that's caused the entire ocean to settle down. Now, as the wind fills in, we have a short window to sail very fast upwind in very small waves. And this equals comparative comfort. So far, we've gotten very lucky on our passage planning on this trip. A majority of our sailing was downwind, and the majority of the time, we were under sail. For this last 16 hours though, it's going to be a bit more tricky. We need to pinch as hard as we can, that is go as far upwind as we can in ever increasing headwinds to get as close to Horta as possible so as to enter port while it's still light outside. Another cardinal rule of prudent cruising sailors is never to enter an unknown harbor at night. You can bend that rule a little bit for big cities and big lit up ports. But if there's any coral or dangerous navigating, you just don't want to do it. Local time is 1 a.m. Sunset is 7 p.m. That gives us roughly 18 hours to cover the last 124 nautical miles. 124 divided by 18 is 6.8 knots average. Easy peasy. That should be super easy for us. I'm off to bed. I will do my final captain's log update in the morning. I woke up to find the forward head completely filled with water. It seems my hatch in the head leaks like a sieve. I think it's a bad hatch seal. Maybe from the freezing weather in New England, maybe from the sun, but whatever the cause, we need to get this water out of the boat. I grabbed the wet dry vac and plugged it in, and nothing. I called back to the crew to switch on the generator, and I had power for about 60 seconds before being informed that there was a burning electronic smell. Great. No more AC power. Bailing out a sailboat is always such a fun experience. It really makes you question your life choices. Upon further investigation, I now see what happened. The hatch in the forward head leaked so badly that it filled up the pan, leaked into the cabinet, filled up that, 
And as water does, it took the path of least resistance all the way down the starboard side of the boat. It's a hell of a mess. We did our best to clean it up, but it really needs to be rinsed with fresh water and vacuumed out, both requiring power. We've got 20 nautical miles left to go. Hopefully nothing major is fried. The crew is on half an hour bailing watch, as there's nothing we can do to stop the hatch from leaking. The deck is soaking wet outside, nothing will stick to it. The only way to fix it would be to heave to, stop, rinse off the deck with fresh rotter, dry it, shove a whole tube of caulking around the outside of the window seal, wait for a day for that to dry. This would be a fine option if we had multiple days left in the water, but we're on our last three hours. So we're just going to have to go bail out the water from the bathroom as it comes, and we'll fix it when we get in port. These things happen. It's a very rough environment to have a floating house with a thousand different little systems in it, and little rubber seals that get brittle in the sun. Nearly all fiberglass boats leak. It's in their nature. The trick is to find the leaks and fix them as soon as they come, so as not to have anything major happen like this. This specific situation, unfortunately, is just a fault of circumstance. The hatch seal most likely went bad over the winter, but the rain and the little bit of sea spray that we were getting through this entire passage going downwind wasn't enough to reveal the problem. Now that we're beating and we're taking a lot of water over the front of the boat, the boat is flexing and water's coming over, and uh, yeah, well, you know the climax. So just to answer the question I'm sure some of you have, if we take the sails down and we motor directly into these seas, it really wouldn't help that much. For one, it'll slow us down by about half. And for two, because of the profile of the bottom of the boat, we would be pounding directly into the waves with no stability from the healing part of it. It's just better to stay on course with the sails, get to the dock, and clean this up ASAP. We are getting pounded right now. Cooking is impossible, nobody slept, the forward cabin is downright dangerous. After nearly 2,000 miles of great downwind sailing, Mother Nature is just reminding us who's boss. We will absolutely arrive in the next three hours. And as I said before, this is so bittersweet. The crew is all dying to be on shore. And I, well, I can't wait to be back out to sea. Captain James Evenson, signing off. right there. Shit, I just sped up the boat. That's us on the bottom, and that's where we're going right there. This is salty. You're salty. We are salty dogs. Yeah. Very glad to have made it. I'm ready to get off this boat. I'm also super excited to go on land again. What's the thing you miss most on the boat and look forward when you go offshore? Oh, the thing I miss about being offshore? I, yeah. like, to, I like to unplug. I like to not have a phone. Unplug? I, I prefer not having my phone in my pocket. Oh yeah. And what do you look forward when we go on the island? A dry bed. A dry bed? <laughs> okay. And your girlfriend, baby? Yeah, yeah, her too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you? Uh, definitely the thing I miss most is my beautiful wife. Yeah, but you can't, if she's not here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're saying like, what do I miss about offshore? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. When we go on the island, what will you do? Like, get oh. some fresh food oh, or uh, have a shit in a toilet, whatever. I think meet the people, meet the locals. Meet the locals? There, see how they do life. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Because there's, uh, yeah, there's always, 
completely different ways of doing things. So it's nice to get out of your comfort zone that way. Yeah, of course. Choi. Choi. Not right now. <laughs> okay. Let's go to chess. Maybe she's more motivated. Chess? How are you doing? Also, um, we are asking all the people on the boat what they miss and like what they miss on the boat, like what they're going to do when they're on land again, like having some fresh food or whatever. Yeah, I want a salad. A salad? Yeah, and a... Ice. Salad and ice? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, why not? <laughs> we can do this today. Boat is a completely mess. Normally it's more ordinary, but yeah. Okay, now let's come to me. So when I go to the island, I will get some fresh food, especially fruits, because we are kind of running out of fruits and we weren't able to catch some fishes. So no sushi, yeah, only dry rice, but that's life.